Do you have any idea how cancel culture is playing out and impacting our younger generation? Do you know what are the reasons for some of the students think it's okay to cancel someone who have different point of views? At CPAC in Orlando, Florida, I met a college student, Justine Moray, a beautiful and polite young lady. She was actually in the news back in 2019. I believe her personal experience on campus can really help us better understand the pervasiveness and the severity of cancel culture in our society. From her story, Justine seems to be a victim, but she sounds more like a victor. And why is that? Find out by yourself. Justine, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So you've been telling me a little bit, but tell our audience about your story. Sure. So I've been covering、um, leftist bias and abuse on college campuses, writing stories and filming videos of campus protests, an attempt to shut down the First Amendment on our campuses、um, for my entire time as a student. And that has got me a lot of backlash. Students don't like that I'm conservative.、Um, they also don't like that I am a Zionist Jew, which basically means that、um, Jewish people have the right to live in their ancestral homeland of Israel. And、um, in 2019, I was invited、um, by the president to stand next to him at the White House as he signed the Campus Free Speech Executive Order、um, because of what happened on my campus. Because I tried to start a conservative group on my campus, and the university at first wouldn't let me have that group. They said the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, is exclusionary to some students,、um, despite the fact that they have the First Amendment plastered on one of the campus buildings. I found it pretty hypocritical, so I read about. It.、Um, I had the opportunity to go to the White House because of、uh, my writing,、um, but then things started getting worse on campus. At one point, a professor approached me in the dark. I didn't even know who she was. She grabbed my shoulder and said,、um, "You better watch out. I know who you are,、um, even though you, you might not know who I am."、Um, and the university—they just pretend it wasn't—it wasn't happening. My own professor started harassing me online,、um, doxing me. Professor saying, "Oh, here's your local right-wing agitator. I had her in class one time. She was odd."、Um, and then students started harassing me. A couple of times, I tried to film campus protests just in the back for my outlet, and I was surrounded by hundreds of students, mobbed. Students blocked doors so I couldn't get out of the room.、Um, they pulled me aside and said, "Hey, you're a dangerous threat."、Um, people. Feel unsafe with you around because、um, we've seen you support President Trump, and you think that hate speech,、um, hate speech,、um, should still be legal under the First Amendment.、Um, so things got even worse over the summer, this past summer, where I started receiving death threats online and getting doxxed by some of these students. Students、um, who some people said that they they wish the Holocaust happened again、uh, against me、um, because I stood up for a Jewish professor. Um, who they wanted to get fired because she is a Zionist and she served in the Israeli Defense Forces.、Um, so then this happened to another conservative student, a student who was only a freshman at the time. She was getting canceled, doxed, and it got to the point where the university, no matter how many times we submitted complaints, they、um, just did not do anything. They pretended they were investigating this stuff and they just refused to to, to help. Um, so I can't come back to campus anymore because it's physically unsafe. I'm currently at a program in D.C. that my university hosts, which is I feel a little bit better there because there's like not that many students, and I don't feel like people are gonna come after me. So, from your understanding, why they act that way? I think that it starts with. The, the issue in our education system right now, that students are being coddled on our college campuses, and they're being taught that any differing view is an existential threat to them, and that anyone who poses a different view, whether it's conservative or maybe just right of center, maybe just not woke enough, then their own identity is being threatened, and they take that personally, and. Honestly, I believe our our universities are teaching students not、um, how to go out into the real world, not how to to get a job and, and be educated, but they're teaching them how to be narcissists with all these identity politics oriented courses. This studies, that studies, me studies. It's、um, 
they're learning more about their own uh, view of victimhood. They're they're learning how to be victims, not how to be victors, and that's how they learn to go on the attack to attack people who may pose a different view. So what you really see is the education system just uh, missing on that. I think it is because in a lot of our classes we're being taught. Um, teachers are telling us that um, oh, if you dare uh, express uh, some concerns about the U.S. presidential election, then you're spreading disinformation. That's the big word now. Recently, um, in in a class I had, uh, the discussion that came up was that. Uh, the idea: Should we be banning speech if it's um, on, based on untruths? And they use the actual term "untruths." And if anyone has has read 1984, um, they use that term "untruth" satirically to expose uh, this this uh, censorship, the promotion of censorship. And now the fact that people are actually using that term, professors are using that term to uh, to, to be serious, to say that, hey, maybe we need to censor speech. Um, I mean, that's scary. So uh, th these ideas are being instilled in in students' heads from college professors um, and and from administrators, from administrators who pass laws and hate hate speech codes. My college is on the top ten list of worst colleges for free speech, and. I I can see why, um, and I don't know if we'll ever get off that list. But I I really hope we do because I love my university and I know we have a lot of potential. But it, it's just trying to to stop this re-education that professors are trying to trying to promote. But then how? Why you are different? Have a different views than the others? Right. Well, I was raised、um, by a family who taught me never to feel sorry for myself, not to be a wannabe victim, to always try to look on the bright side of issues, and not think that, well,、um, I didn't get this opportunity or I didn't get that opportunity, so I'm just going to give up and blame the world. Point finger. Point fingers at everybody else.、Um, the main value in our family has always been individual responsibility, and I have tried to take that on with me throughout college and here. So, what would you like to do about that? Yeah. So, I'm currently、um, running a campaign、um, about free speech to promote free speech, particularly on college campus. It's called Operation Restoring Free Speech on College in Higher Education, and I promote this campaign throughout my reign as Miss Northern Highlands in the Miss America organization.、Um, so, I'm competing for Miss New Jersey in June, and part of my role is to promote this platform to、um, go to college campuses. Um, particularly in my state,、um, but elsewhere, and talk to students about the importance of free speech and hearing different ideas.、Um, and right now, I'm currently helping a couple of students who have felt the same、um, backlash as I have,、um, who have been shut down on their campus sanctions, and I'm helping them get their stories out by reporting on their stories.、Um, and currently, I'm talking to professors as well.、Um, you often think that、um, people often think that the only professor Professors out there are those who are on the far left, but that's not true. There are so many professors who have been affected by cancel culture recently, who have been fired、uh, by their from their jobs,、um, and I'm really speaking to them now、um, and letting them share their stories. Okay, so when you were teenager, you were pageant? Page yes. <laughs> Sure. So I、um, started competing in pageantry at 16 years old, and I remember I had no clue what it would be like because I was used to being、um, an actress. I was very interested in theater, ways, but it, it was the same as theater in in many other ways.、Um, you get to dress up, and、um, it really empowers women to use their voice to be articulate. A lot of people view pageantry as oh, you just put on makeup and prance around in a bathing suit,、um, and that's actually not true. In the Miss America organization,、um, which I'm competing in right now, they have actually modified it to、um, give women an even bigger platform to express、um, support for whatever cause that they're really concerned about, what they really want to promote、um, to their community. 
And for me, that has been free speech. And I'm just so happy that I can, you know, I can wear a gown and I can talk about how much I love the First Amendment. <laughs> Yeah, talking about the you know the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment. Yeah, it has been some surveys about how a lot of the students don't really have a lot of knowledge about that. So how really it is from your experience? Other students, you know, do they know about really know about the? Yeah. Things? They don't. So after um, my conservative chapter was barred on campus, um, I went out and interviewed students about their knowledge on the Constitution and whether they be actually believe the Constitution and the First Amendment is exclusionary. And to my dismay, a lot of those students actually said yes, that they believe the U.S. Constitution is exclusionary. And um, recently in one of my classes, I've um, witnessed students saying that we need to revise the First Amendment to combat hate speech. And the question is, well, what do you define as hate speech? We all have different definitions of what hate speech is. Um, and I don't think that students understand that. Um, not all students, but some students whom I have met before, um, because they take it for granted. Um, so many of these students have never stepped foot outside of America. And when they have, because sometimes they say they have, they haven't really stepped foot outside of America. They you know, go into um, a, a very Americanized, um, area of, of a different country um, where you know, they as vacationers have their rights as Americans, um, but the people who are living in that certain country don't have those rights. And they, are, they just don't understand that. Um, they have so much time to bash America, bash the Constitution, bash the First Amendment, when they don't realize these are the very fundamental things that are giving them the opportunity to criticize the country, to say how much they want to change the First Amendment. So I find it a little bit ironic, and, and I hope they see that one day, and I'm trying to help students see that. To the audience we have, you know, some are maybe younger people like you, or some are older. So to each group of them, what would you like to say to, you know, for your cause and for your, what's your, what you are concerned about? Right. I would say if you're a student who has views who it, it might be unpopular, um, do not stop speaking out because people win, people want to censor you, they win by scaring you into silence, by threatening you into submission. And if you need a mentor if, or if you need someone to, to reach out to or, or some, some guidance, feel free to reach out to me, um, reach out to other students. There are so many students here who have experienced the same issues of censorship. And if you're a student who maybe is on the left of things, the left side of things, I also encourage you to express your views, express your, your free speech, um, and listen to the other side. Listen to conservatives. Um, don't automatically cast people out as bigots um, simply because you know a professor says that this group is uh, full of bigots and you shouldn't listen to them at all. Um, because sometimes if you listen to opposing views, it might actually affirm your own views and it might make you more educated and stronger in your stance so you can promote your views in the future in a more articulate manner. manner. Yeah, and then maybe for the uh, parents, you know, who have kids in the school, and the, what would be your, you know, what would you like to say to them? Right. I would definitely check um, your the universities that your students are applying, your your kids are applying to, um, and see whether they are really an inclusive vir environment for free thinking uh, before you pay so much in tuition money to send them there. Um, if you find a, a university is going to indoctrinate your kids um, filled with you know, th this idea of censorship um, or to censor your kids, um, then I would, I would think twice before sending them to that university. Um, or I would instill those values, um, tell your, your kids in advance, hey, you might be facing some of these issues once you get to your college campus. Um, but you know, if you need another resource um, besides whatever your professor is telling you, um, there, 
they're out there. Um, I am an ambassador, a student ambassador for Prager University. Um, and some people uh, get confused by the name. Um, no, it's not a university. I wish it was because I would attend. Um, but it's, um, it's a platform, a, a social media platform, um, where they express ideas that are truthful, based in fact, and counter a lot of the lies that college professors are telling their students. Um, so definitely expose your kids, and if you're a student, expose yourself to those ideas. And maybe compare and contrast um, what some of these other outlets, outside outlets, are presenting um, to what you're being taught in your class. So therefore you can get a balanced viewpoint. Yeah, wonderful. So Justine, yeah, really appreciate you share your story, your viewpoints with our audience. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It was so great to speak with you.